science, including Chairing the Consciousness Healing Initiative, which is, if you don't know that group, is a, and Jennifer's involved with them, is a group of scientists and healers from around the world aggregating and collaborating together on learning more about subtle energies and, and the biofield in particular. So my background has not been designed to be that way. I just kind of went from thing to thing. My only superpower may be that I stumble and know how to get up and keep going and stumble again, know how to get up and keep going. And along the way, I found commonality across all those fields, my experience with the trees, and of course the new science of trees, and I'll come to that. My experience with, the, with Aikido and the study of ki or chi flow and life force energy, as I know you talk a lot about in quantum, and my experience with light body meditation, and then biofield science. And I just recently wrote a book that summarized all of this, and you might have seen that. And what I've discovered is that this can help us in our relationships. You're all healers, and I admire you. I don't say that I'm an energy healer per se. That's not my path. But I certainly am trying to do my, my best to serve. And what I found in my own personal and, and professional discovery of the use of the biofield is it can dramatically improve and change relationships. And it's because there's something called, that I've called, the shared biofield. In other words, if you have a biofield and I have a biofield, right now, in this moment, we're sharing a biofield. And everyone who gets on this call is creating and sharing an even larger biofield, so to speak. And if that's true, and the ancients said it is, and the science seems to prove it is, then what does that mean? That's, that's extraordinary. It means we're not just ending at our skin. It means we're connecting, whether we know it or not, in these vibratory ways that you study in your healing work. And I've been experimenting in the past couple of years to test this out, to say, well, what happens? And I'll tell you about some of those in a minute. I can tell you this, that the experiments have been very surprising and positive to me. I entered this as a skeptic, as Richard was, saying, I don't know. Is there really a biofield? And if there is, what does it mean? And what we're discovering is it means a lot to people. One of my questions when I did a beta test this last fall on biofield movements, as Jennifer mentioned, was I just said, well, can this be taught or learned? Or is it you're born with it? Or is it just straight intuition or whatever? And the response to that class was sufficient that it definitely can be taught and can be learned. So today, I'm just going to try and give you a glimpse of that. And Jennifer was very kind they're very pointed when you said to me, Dan, don't just talk to these people, okay? <laughs> Give them an experience, right? Let them have a way of picking up skills or a hint towards skills so that it's more engaging than just my talking head. So I'm gonna do that, Jennifer. That's a perfectly reasonable request, pretty smart request. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do, we're gonna start with a guided journey. So I would like you to get very quiet and very still, please, or however that works for you. Just adjust your posture. Just get nights, nice. let the day go. Maybe it's morning, maybe it's afternoon or evening. Just breathe, you know how to do this. You're all skilled practitioners. Just go into your very quiet, still place, please. And come with me today on a journey to your biofield. Now I want you to imagine that you're, you're seeing and feeling your way into. Somebody needs to be muted there. Excuse me, just a sec. Now I want you to imagine that you're taking a moment and you're looking at your cells. We have, the human body has over 7 trillion cells. Who knows how many atoms and subatomic structures? Let's just, let's just deal with the cells. So just imagine now that you're regarding them. You're sensing them. You're feeling them. You're, in a sense, connecting and communicating with them. Seven trillion. And not only do you have seven trillion cells, they're working in deep, close collaboration to create you right in this moment, in every moment of your life. So send them your gratitude and your thanks for the crucial role they play in your very existence. 
And now imagine, because we know this to be true, that all those cells are collaborating by communicating with one another. Chemicals, information, electromagnetic charge, many, many ways our cells connect. Deep, deep collaboration. And now I also want you to imagine that every cell has its own biofield. Seven trillion biofields interacting and exchanging, which goes to make up your biofield. Now turn your attention away from your cells and up to your physical body and imagine your energy field. You all experience different ways, a lot or a little. For some people, it's kinesthetic. Some people it's visual. However you experience your energy field as a skilled practitioner or a studier of quantum touch and other practices, just feel that field. Now imagine that this field is larger than you ever thought it might be because that's what the evidence is beginning to show. And we'll do some learning about that in a minute. And imagine that your biofield, so to speak, is not just a layer close in, you know, some call it the aura, et cetera. Imagine, imagine that you are four feet wide, six feet wide, eight feet wide, 12 feet wide, and take it out, take it off or out, however you want, because it seems as if the biofield is immense, immense. And as Richard was saying, quantum touch, this is a quantum experience. The biofield seems to exist in the quantum spaces. So now just imagine, not only do you not end at your skin, but you are huge. Now, what's interesting is if you're huge, so is everybody else. So now imagine you're walking down the street, but you're somehow more aware of your biofield than others. And you're watching them interact. And perhaps you see a child and you can't help smiling, but perhaps you felt her energy. And perhaps you see someone who's struggling and you can't help feel compassion for them. And perhaps you are a little more alert so you don't bump into somebody because you can feel their energy presence. So you're learning to navigate with your biofield and with others' biofields. This is a glimpse into who we may really be. Just a glimpse. Now take a moment and connect with that biofield of whatever size you want. And give it gratitude like you give yourselves. And give yourselves gratitude again because they are helping create and produce and hold this biofield. Now breathe in. Breathe in this new a knowledge that you are and have a biofield, and so does everyone else, and consider the possibility that so does everything else, and we'll come back to that. And when you're ready, give thanks, and come back into the room. So I ask you to consider this. If there's any possibility that what we just did as a guided meditation is true, is real in some way or another. I don't pretend to understand all the details of the biofield. I'm not sure we ever will. It's so complex and, and nuanced. And the implications for our relationships are huge. So if I have a biofield and you have a biofield, but I haven't been aware of it and I haven't been paying attention to it in our marriage or our friendship or our collegiality or our neighborhood, we're bumping into one another and we're entangling our biofields and we're getting messed up sometimes. Right. You as skilled energy practitioners can really work with this because you can shift the quality and tone of your biofield. You know how to manage and handle vibrational levels and intensity and focus. You can apply those skills not only to your healing acts and art, but to your life generally and to your relationships. So 
think about the implications of everybody walking around on this planet, billions of us, not knowing that we have biofields enmeshed and entangled in everybody else's biofields, and you see the result. So the bad news is we're entangled. The good news is we can disentangle. Because one of the things I learned in Aikido was that the harmony is at the boundary. Our, our biofields can become harmonious when we know more about them and we meet the other's biofield, so to speak. If you can see my hands, that might be one boundary of a two or three foot biofield for me and might be for you. And if we meet there, we can create harmony. If you think about the times in your life where things are harmonious in a relationship or a conversation or a discovery or when you're doing art or music or dance, I think the science is going to show more and more that you're going into harmony with your own biofield. And if it's a group effort, you're in training with the biofields of others. And of course, you know all about entrainment from Richard's teachings. So we're talking now about going from the entanglement and the chaos of biofields to the entrainment and the harmony of biofields, intentional awareness of our energy fields. And you also know well enough that when you turn your radiant being to something, it lights up and it gets stronger and clearer. So just think about this from the point of view of you actually have a biofield and it is huge and it can be very useful in your life. Jennifer mentioned they've done a lot of business activities and projects and yeah, I've managed universities and hospitals and, and you've tried to use energy principles in doing that with some spectacular failures and some spectacular successes. But what I've learned is that as it is in me, so it is out there. It's an ancient Chinese wisdom as below, so above the I Ching. And I've learned that if I manage my energy, not just internally, but the external version of my biofield, it's really not that hard to manifest in the world. And lately we've stumbled on something we're calling biofield abundance relative to this. And if you're interested in that, we can expand on it. Now, when I taught my beta class in the fall, I deliberately called it a movement class because we want people to discover and develop muscle memory around these things. And because embodied learning takes it out of our heads and into our bodies. So I'm just gonna show you a few very simple movements today. In the larger class in, the, in May and other classes, I'll be standing up on a big screen and you'll see me moving around a bit more. But today we're just sitting in front of our computers. So the movements will be small, um, but still pointed and I think still helpful. And the very first movement I want to show you, and you can all try it. And those of you that wanna show your videos, great. I'll be scanning the screens and watching your movement. It's called the butterfly. And I want you to put your fingers up like this. And I want you to imagine the center point between those fingers. And now you're going to draw in the air a butterfly shape, just like an infinity symbol. But when you do it, if you can, if you're mobile enough, move your hips. Don't just move your arms. You can't see my hips because I'm sitting down. But if I was standing up, my hips are actually what is turning my fingers and hands. And vary it. You can make it large. I'm going to make a big one. You can make it small. You can go low. You can go high. Just spend a moment doing that. And understand that you're inscribing aspects and elements of your biofield. When you move, your biofield moves with you. And just imagine, there's not just you and your hands, it's your whole energy field. And breathe, don't forget to breathe. And be creative, right? You've got a certain pattern, change it. Right? And see how that feels. See what feels good for you. And you don't strain yourself or stretch too far or strain your shoulders, just enjoy it for a minute. And then let that go. Now, the idea of looking at a little spot between your fingers, and you may or may not have kept doing that, don't you? is in Aikido, you're taught that that is the center. A lot of practices have your center in your physical body, and that's fine. But Aikido actually taught that it's outside out here. And of course, that means when you're interacting with another person, say in the martial art terms, it's easier to imagine and feel your center. So I've been practicing that version of a center for many years, and 
it's almost second nature to me now just as a practice. And of course, it's easier when you're in a conversation with someone or when you're even in a conflict with someone to imagine your center. You don't have to have your hands up, they might freak out, right? But you can just watch that point. And of course, when you move, my center moves with me. I watch it in all kinds of different places. So think about it. A simple movement like that can create muscle memory. So you're going to practice that and some other ones I'm going to show you in a minute. And you practice them a lot. They're going to help you because it embodies your wisdom and your knowledge. And of course, let me state the obvious here. You come to this with your incredible wisdom and knowledge. It's not about mine. You have yours. And my job is to catalyze and open and point back to your own wisdom and your own deep knowing. Here's another way to think about this. If I don't end at my skin, where do I end? The truth is nobody knows. You'll see when we do the heart exercise in a minute, when they first started measuring the electromagnetic field of the heart, never mind other energies of the heart, they thought it was four feet wide. Then they found it was eight feet wide. And then they found it was 12 feet wide. And the better their instrumentation got, the better the measurement got. So I want you to think about the paradox of that. I thought I ended at my skin and I don't know where I end now. Now that doesn't have to be confusing or scary. It can be exciting because it turns out there are many layers to the biofield. Different layers mean different things and different healers have different modalities on it and different ways of thinking about it. But I'm not so caught up in that. There are many different theories, of course, about the chakras and about energy fields and everything else. Here's another way to think about this. Put your hands over your heart center. Not your physical heart, but your heart center, which typically is said to be over your sternum. Okay, And put two hands there. If I wouldn't, didn't have one hand holding my dog, I'd put two hands there. And just imagine that you're touching into the core of your being, your heart center. Two hands over your heart center. And slowly pull your hands out. Whatever speed you want, slow or fast. And know that when you're doing that, you are pulling out and identifying and relating to your heart field, the field of that particular chakra. Just stretch, stretch it out. Go as far as you want. Remember what the science says, it's larger than we ever imagined. And breathe, don't forget to breathe. Just breathe. And when you take it far enough, just rest there for a moment, whatever far enough is. And then bring it back, slowly, just slowly. And then do it again at another different speed or a different size. Now, what are you doing? You're taking one chakra, could have been an organ, could have been the heart itself. And you're understanding that it doesn't end at its inside surface either. To you, this vast, complex, nested series of fields in which the heart center is just one. One of my favorites, probably one of yours, but just one. And shake your hands and let that go. Now to put this in context, I said a minute ago on our journey that perhaps everything has a biofilm. And the science on that is very weak. It's not very strong, at least in in the Western world, it's a little stronger in some Eastern countries. But of course, now we're beginning to understand that trees communicate and that mycelium connect to trees. And we begin to understand all kinds of nature, natural relationships we didn't understand before. And of course, as human beings, if we can't see the science, we often say it doesn't exist. And we know about that argument in terms of energy healing. 
But my experience, honestly, is that everything does have an energy field. And if that's true, it's not just other people. Right? It's your dog. He was feeling my energy field, obviously, wanting to climb in the chair with me. It's a piece of gravel in your driveway. It's a tree. It's a bird. It's anything you think of. They don't enter their skin, I'm submitting to you. Now, is there any proof that that's true? Not yet. But how, would, how arrogant it would be of human beings to assume that we're the only ones with biofields. What anthropomorphism that is. Right? Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe every other species, except for humanity, already knows that they have this intuitive energy space. And it's just a natural part of their being. Of course, how they survive and then how they thrive. Just think about that. If that's true, if every other species has an energy field and already lives in harmony with it, my goodness, what we can learn from them. My goodness, what the trees are trying to teach us, what our animals are trying to teach us, what a drop of water is trying to teach us, what a mountain is trying to speak to us, so to speak. So I'm just trying to stretch your mind and take you into this world of biofilm awareness that the more you explore it, the more opening and endless it becomes. When we go into entrainment with our own biofield, which of course you do in your own way with a patient and when you're healing, of course, you know this very well, I'm sure. Something else is happening. It's the power of intentionality. When you intend in a healing act or to care for someone or to solve a problem or to manifest something. My experience and experience of many others is that it amplifies the biofield. Somehow our biofield gets bigger and more effective, whatever the right terms are. It changes the biofield, the clearer we are. Now you can think of this in its opposite. If you're in a negative space and you're worried or you're fearful or you're scared or you're depressed or upset, there's evidence to suggest that our biofields shrink. So I know that when I'm trying to create something or do something or, or raise some money or, or um, be abundant, if I'm shrinking at the same time I'm trying to live an abundant life, I'm contradicting myself. But if I'm expanding, not only my overall biofield, but my cellular biofields, things start to change. And of course, it's because of the flow of key and life force energy. Right? The biofield, you might consider it this way, is a vehicle for the flow of key or chi. It's something we know nothing, little about in scientific terms, lots more in healing terms, of course, lots more anciently. So I'm suggesting to you today, and I just want you to think about this and maybe experiment with it, that how you intend dramatically affects your biofield, unconsciously negatively, consciously positively. If that's true, then it becomes a lot easier to manifest things in our life that we want. I think this is a particular challenge for energy healers, right? Because we have energy skills, but then when we think about money or business, we often get small and tight. And we end up contradicting ourselves. And I'm doing some experiments with some other energy healers in other parts of the country about helping them go to scale and, and change that story within themselves. So just some things to consider. Another definition of the shared biofield is real simple. It's something I think Richard would probably agree with, I know Jennifer does, which is the exchange of love. You know, I use the word a lot in my work called transmission. Someone said to me once, well, Dan, well, what do you mean? What is the transmission? Now transmission is, if you haven't heard that term a lot, it's a term that grows spiritual leaders have used for centuries when they ask people, what are you doing, girl? What are you teaching? And they say, well, I'm talking, I'm doing darshan, but mostly I'm silent and mostly I'm transmitting. So mostly transmission is silent. It doesn't have to be. I, I define transmission as intentional communication across the biofield. Intentional communication across the biofield. I'm sitting with someone, it's a young child, maybe they're struggling. 
kind of reaching out to try and support them and love them and care for them. And maybe they feel it. They certainly feel if I'm angry at them or upset with them because they're crying. So think about this. I'm going to suggest that we're transmitting all the time. But usually unconsciously, now you know this as healers. You know very well that your energy field is substantial. You know this, right? By the way, my dog just opened the door and <laughs> climbed in the room. Um, if you're transmitting all the time, what are you transmitting? Not just when you're in a healing session. I don't think you probably know, depending on your level of training, exactly what you're doing now. Right? What do you, but if you're, if you're transmitting walking down the street in the grocery store, but it's unconscious, what are you transmitting? How is your biofilm? And I often talk about this as the Starbucks phenomenon. You ever been in a Starbucks or another coffee shop where someone walks in and they're just really happy and beaming and all of a sudden you feel better? They, you don't know them. They didn't say anything. And But the opposite can happen too. Somebody walks in and they're scowling or maybe they're grumpy or mad at the barista and all of a sudden you feel not so good. <laughs> I think you want to be part of this journey. All right, my friend. This is Caesar. He's 105 pounds. He's a rescue shepherd. He definitely wants in on this story. <laughs> I've never seen him do this, ever. Good puppy, good boy. Yes, yes, there's lots of energy here. Good boy. All right, come on, come on down. Come on down, good boy. So think about it. If you're accidentally transmitting, you can get into trouble or you can harm other people with your energy field. If you're the nasty guy or gal walking into Starbucks and you've got a grumpy mood and you're taking out of the barista, you're infecting, infecting the whole room, the whole Starbucks. Or you can go the other way and manage yourself and regulate yourself. Here's another way to think about it. What do you want to intend in your transmissions? What do you want to happen? You're in control, but not only of your thoughts, of course, of your feelings, you know this well as healers. And you're in control of how you influence other people. Whether you want to be or not, you are. You're influencing them. So the more you know about how I'm transmitting and what I'm communicating across the biofield, the better you can have an influence on others that you want to have. And the same is true for them, for you. Let's try another journey. What do you think of your favorite tree if you have one? Or favorite plant in your house or favorite garden, anything green. And I want you to imagine now that you are feeling, sensing, seeing its biofilm, not just its physical beauty. And maybe you're near it, maybe you're far from it, doesn't matter. Or maybe it's just imaginary tree or plant. Just feel your way into this moment. If you have a favorite or you like it, you have an energetic connection with this tree, it with you. And if it's true that the tree has a biofilm and that biofilms carry information and energy, what is the energy of this tree at this point? What is it communicating to you? Not in words, just in feelings, impressions, senses. And of course, if you're in communication, so to speak, with this tree, you've now created a shared biofield between you and that beautiful object. And more than each of you, it's more than some of the parts. No wonder we like to be in the forest or see nature, or sit on a lawn looking at the sun, at the stars. Just feel your way into this from a biofilm point of view. Tremendous amount of energy and information being exchanged beyond our human consciousness, beyond our puny little mental body's ability to even know it. It doesn't mean we're not getting data points. It doesn't mean we're not enlivened and enriched. Of course we are doesn't have to be understood by our mind. That would be like trying to define love. We don't have to define 
how we care for a tree or a tree cares for us by giving us oxygen. The life we have, we just have to feel it. Feel that shared biofilm now. And of course, some people argue that trees are much wiser than humans because they've had many, many more millions of years to evolve. And that that brings wisdom to them beyond our wisdom. So not only are they are sharing information and exchange and showing us how collaboration can happen, for example, but they have wisdom beyond our own. You don't have to accept that or believe that's what some people say, but if it's true, why wouldn't we access that wisdom? You know, the, um, the rock in Vancouver Island where I live here in British Columbia is 280 million years old. Every time I walk on my gravel driveway in my rural property, I remember that 280 years old and I pick up a piece of gravel and I go, oh my goodness, I'm just 280 million years of wisdom and development for this beautiful crystal, this beautiful piece of the mineral kingdom. Every time I turn my attention to anything and start to appreciate it energetically, I'm sure this is true for you in your own ways, it just puts me into awe and wonder and into silence, beautiful silence. So now with your tree or with your plant, communicate something deliberately, intend something across your biofilm. And then give thanks and come back into the room. I want to show you another movement, one of my favorites, and it relates. And again, in a larger class, I'll be standing up and doing it in a larger form. We should take your hands and place them like this. And they can be in front of your belly or whatever's comfortable for you. And maybe you can rotate them. And just do that. And now imagine that what you're holding is the earth herself. You're holding the earth. So just gently caress her. Just caress her. This beautiful creature, Gaia, some call it. We're not on the earth, we're of the earth. Giving you thanks, your gratitude, your appreciation that this is where you live. This is why you live. You can make it a little larger, make it a little smaller, like the last one, it doesn't matter. But you're creating muscle memory about deep appreciation for our planet. You're not just thinking about it, you're moving and you're feeling it. And like every other practice, if you do this a lot, you'll really enjoy it and you'll really want to do it more. And you can do it larger if you're standing up, etc. depending on your physical abilities. Holding the earth. Just take a moment, close your eyes, do it for a second. And now let it go. And we'll do one more final journey before we turn to Q&A. I want you to close your eyes again and imagine that you're flying up above the earth herself, way up to the point where you can see her as a sphere. It's daytime blue and white, that famous picture from space. And just the same appreciation you had in holding her, you're now sending her from above. And you're regarding her, maybe you're moving around and looking at different parts, maybe you're changing scale, you're getting close, getting far. You decide, maybe the planet's small or huge. But whatever your vision is or your sense or your imagination is, now I want you to imagine the biofield of the earth. She does not end at her skin. If all her creatures, of all of us, of all of us beings have biofields, it would only make sense that she would have one. Something way beyond just her electromagnetic field. Of course, that's part of it. 
Just imagine now, you're sensing, feeling, seeing somehow this vast, vast biofield, which you live in, which you are a part of with yours, which yours contributes to. Just hold that space for a minute. Imagine if that were true. Imagine if that is what's really going on in the deeper realms of our existence, in our lives. And just let it go and come back into the room. So Jennifer, I'm gonna speak a little bit about the May course and then we can do Q and A. So in the um, first week in May, uh, May 6th, we're going to do this work only much more intensively and focused, of course. There's a four week course on Saturday morning, same time as this one. And then there's an optional bonus course for two weeks in which we take all these ideas and expand them. We move much more and we have time for Q&A as we go rather than just at the end. And we explore together this wonderful phenomenon of the biofield. We're still learning about this. This application of something called biofield awareness while it exists in many other cultures and many other languages hasn't quite been this way in this language for us. And so we're in it together, we're in the experiment together. And if this interests you, you know, you can take a look at the links. And I think Jennifer, you have the links you're putting in the chat for the mm -hmm. course. And of course, you're welcome if you're in, in if you if, if you're called to you, you're welcome to read my book about my experiences with the shared biofield. So let's open up to QA. During the pandemic, I started to hug trees in lack of human contacts. And I also felt that I was inside the tree feeling its roots and a swinging crown in the wind. That's a really cool comment. Um, and then question, uh, what's, what's the emerging uh, science that exists around the biofield? Well, again, that's a good question. Believe it or not, there are over 9,000 peer reviewed published studies on the biofield and subtle energy. And um, you can put in the, um, in the chat if you want, chi.is, Jennifer. That's a great collection of all the research science that there is. Now it's new because scientists who want to study the biofield um, and subtle energies get marginalized. They get mocked and, and um, witch hunted in universities. So it's hard and it's hard to get funding. But when they do it, there's some extraordinary studies that are going on within Chi and that's a collaboration of researchers around the world that when I was involved, was, I'm still involved in their advisory committee, I used to chair their board. The science is really, really interesting and, and coming in. Most of it's focused on healing, which is great. That's where we need it, on the science of healing. Um, but some of it's focused more generally on the biofield and how we measure. And what seems to be happening is that when scientists get over their biases, this can't be true, doesn't exist, you know, that usual story, then they start developing better and better instrumentation and better and better hypotheses. And then, of course, they're getting more and more interesting results. So the science is stronger than it's ever been. It's got a long way to go, but it's quite exciting. Yeah, so we had uh, more questions. Uh, somebody asked, will the uh, um, course cover the abundance aspect that you're talking about, how to attract abundance by expanding the biofield? Yeah, it will. And, and you know, um, I think that's something I've been naturally doing my whole life without quite realizing it, is applying my energy skills to my cell leader structure and and, and um, I haven't had that much trouble manifesting things over, over the years. So yes, I think we will. It wasn't in the first beta course I did, but I think we will put it in and play with it and see what it does for people and how it helps them because it just had this hit, this intuitive hit that there's really something there about the relationship between our cellular biofields and our overall biofields and our ability to manifest. Great question, thank you. Yeah, I've noticed a big difference in how changing your biofield can change your um, business and money attraction points. So I, I think it's a really important topic. Um, another question, how can we use biofield awareness to enhance relationships? Another good question. Here's what I would say is that you, if you're in a relationship, you already have a shared biofield, whether you know it or not. You have a biofield, they have a biofield. And the question becomes, what is it? Is it harmonious? Is it entangled? As we learn more awareness of our biofield, 
we're, we're finding some wonderful things. I did an experiment in the past two years, a beta test with a family, an adult family, and um, across different, three different spots in the US. And we started doing biofield, shared biofield work every week for the past year and a half. And it dramatically changed your relationship because here's what I saw happen, still happening. When you drop into that center place and when you're thinking about your biofield, just as when you're doing healing work, you're more authentic. There's fewer stories there. You're more vulnerable, you're more open. And another way to think about this is if you understand how entangled you are, you can start to disentangle. You can think about this from a point of view of when you open your heart, you have to be vulnerable. And when you open your heart and you're vulnerable, you're going to speak more honest truth, more compassionately, and so with the other person. What happened to this family, this adult family, is they started dropping their stories about one another. They started being more present with one another, more consistently. And they say that their relationships have improved dramatically. Yeah, I, I agree. If you, uh, um, let's see, we had another question and then someone asked to be taken off mute to make a comment. So first of all, ask, would you please tell us more about your book? Sure. The book is one of a, it's a second book in a trilogy about the biofield. It's called Wake Up Connected, a lived experience of the shared biofield. I wanted, I did, I did two things in the book. I talk about the latest science and the implications of this work in shared biofield. And it's interspersed, I didn't plan to do this, with autobiographical segments from my own life where I went back and looked at peak moments in my life and looked at them from a biofield point of view and said, what was the biofield lesson I was trying to teach myself? It's not a long book, it was fun to write. Um, and it's, the third book will be, so that first book was Wake Up Curious, the second book is Wake Up Connected. The third book is Wake Up in Community, which is where I think the rest of the planet and universe lives except for humanity. Because here's the bottom line for me, we're not separate. We are taught we're separate. We live as if we're separate. We're literally not separate. And the biofield may be that which connects us. And if it does, we can learn from nature and other parts of the universe about what collaboration and cooperation truly is. Great. Um, well, Jacqueline had a comment. <clears throat> I unmuted her. Hi, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, Dan. I just want to, um, you're, you're new for me. My friend had told me about your works and I just wanted to say thank you for sharing your wisdom. And um, I thought I was the only one that communicated with trees. Um, and so she told me about you and uh, I appreciate you and at a different level. So I thank you for sharing the information. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I think truly that we all have some glimpses of these truths and we're just trying to piece it together and share it. Yeah, thank you. Another question. Um, can you expand on how movement and Aikido can enhance our shared awareness? I think we usually approach relationships through thought and language. Movement as a way to influence shared energy is really interesting. And it's a, another great question. Yeah, I think the thing that I learned during Aikido was muscle memory. I learned the muscle memory of chi flow and ki flow, Japanese call it ki, ki, same thing as the Chinese chi. And I didn't, we didn't have that language, but I realized sooner or later that that's what was happening. And so my knowledge of my flow of chi or ki is in my muscle, not in my mind. And when we try to, I mean, look how we're we doing as a society trying to live through our minds, particularly in the Western culture. It's not going very well, okay? especially these days. Therefore, embodied learning is critical because what it does is it takes us away from monkey mind and mind chat. It takes us away from stories and preconceptions, right? In ourselves, about others. And when we feel it, literally kinesthetically feel it, it's a different, deeper kind of learning. Yeah, I feel like a lot of relationship is unraveling stories. So you can just be authentic which you can do with the biofield. So um, next question, uh, uh, Beng, okay, common, I guess. Um, Bingsta did some great work, or Bingstun did some great work that is connected all meta healing and appreciating methodologies are connected and connecting. Thank you. 
looking forward to yours. Um, and someone just said, thank you for a wonderful webinar. Um, any other questions? Oh, that's very sweet. Yeah, chat or raise your hand. Yeah, I I had one. When you, you actually asked my question, Jennifer, I think you're reading my mind over there. She is like uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> but so this is kind of, uh, would be a way to use the uh, quantum touch uh, energy more effectively to do things uh, remotely in that, right? The biofield. Yeah. yeah, great question. Absolutely. You know, we've seen I've seen Richard's work about the quantum field, right? The quantum effect. And as we begin to understand our our biofields better, then we can navigate the quantum field, so to speak. We don't have to be blind to it. Okay, and if you can navigate the quantum field, so to speak, through the biofields, almost like the biofields, like a spaceship to navigate the quantum field, if that makes any sense, um, then it's much, I think it will enhance your remote healing. Uh, and I think it will enhance all kinds of things in your life if you want to explore it even beyond healing. Yeah, so the, the all right, I appreciate it. The, Thank you, Jennifer and Dan. Oh, sure. Yeah, I just think the energy healing, like the working with quantum touch healing is one application. And when you do a lot of healing work, you can start to feel the energy fields, right? And then this is an awareness of your biofield and how it interacts with other people. And so you can feel their energy and your energy and like the collective interaction and then how that projection actually impacts, let's say, as Dan was saying, like the Starbucks or your own pets. Um, obviously, you can impact your pets energetically, um, your partner. Um, you know, that type of really, and also your relationship with money is kind of a abundance is again, sort of a relationship that we have with ourselves and others. Um, so yeah, that's, yeah. that's good. Jim. Let me pick up on both those points. I think we're in energy impacting everything all the time, including our relationships. We just don't know it. We don't pay attention to it. Right. And that's really tragic because we can get in all kinds of trouble with it. Right. 50% divorce rates, et cetera. Um, trouble with our children, et cetera. Um, and so this awareness extends our consciousness to how am I impacting those around me and how do I wish to? It empowers you, right? It enables you right? instead of feeling hopeless or helpless or out of my control. And of course, you got to start with yourself. You got to self-manage as you do as healers, you know, as, as your journey towards um, being in right and harmonious relationship with others. With respect to money, you know, this is something I didn't um, know that everybody had a problem with because you might have seen in my bio or, or material that I've raised hundreds of millions of dollars during my career and it wasn't hard. And everybody said, well, how are you doing that? It's supposed to be hard. And, and I had to really think about it. I thought, well, I somehow understood money as energy. It because of my very early Aikido training. So if you understand money as energy, you're not putting the human qualities of greed and fear into money. And that's what we do. You put worry, greed, fear, prestige, everything in there, right? Power, we jam it in like a pure stream of water polluted by our thoughts about money. The Bible doesn't say money is evil, it's the root of all evil, it's just, right? the love of money, right? So it's what we put into it. And so over the years, I guess I just found a way to understand money as energy and, and manage greed or fear that I might have around money for others, money for myself, etc. So the more we understand who we are as energy creatures, not just in our healing modalities, but in our manifesting modalities, in our need for income and in our need to be sustainable and abundance generally, not just money, but generally abundant love, abundant peace, abundant calm, and yes, including abundant income. Um, the easier it gets. Uh, another question, is the biofield where healing begins? Well, my personal opinion, I think it is. I think it is. And remember, I've taken the view that every cell has a biofield, which would mean every atom would have a biofield, and every quark, subatomic structure, have a biofield. So I think that that is where healing begins, but I don't call myself a healer, so people wiser than me would have to comment on that. Yeah, I, I believe our, our health issues are a reflection of our energy, including our relationships. Like a lot of health stuff could be relationships with your partner, relationships with yourself, relationships with money. Um, that's from every 
I answer every customer service call. And that's what I've seen is a lot of people um, are stuck on the relationship aspect of their life, whether it's their partner or money or even with their self or self-worth. There's it's uh, not there's really nothing physically to do other than process all this stuff. That's what I've learned um, over the time of working with um, customers here. Um, and uh, an interesting people, comment, Jennifer, on the on a ballet class, what I want to pick up. I just saw it. In yeah, Jennifer. just read that. And, it, and it's true in sports and sports teams as well. That it is a shared biofilm, right? Whether people call that or not. I'd love to see the science one day of people on teams or soccer teams or, or ballet, art, music, et cetera, because I'm pretty sure that those folks, biofilms are all in training. They're all in trainment. They're training in very similar frequencies and patterns. And isn't that exciting to discover that that's what produces wonderful art, great sports, et cetera. And think about it. Think about the shared biofield of the family. What is the vibratory and trained feeling of your family or not? Right? And what can we do with it? And the shared biofield of the quantum touch community, the shared quantum touch is its own being, yep. you know, and so it has a shared biofield. Um, yeah, it's a great word, someone said. So great. Um, yeah, well, thank you, everyone. Any last minute questions? Yeah, someone yeah said I think it's that's right. And some of them uh, old books, Jennifer and Dan, I think they uh, like Napoleon Hill in that they refer to that as a mastermind. That yeah. intensity is more uh, than the individual people in, in it. Right? Yeah, and, there, and there's new research on awe and wonder, which shows that when we share in moments of awe and wonder, watching a sunset, watching somebody help somebody else, um, it's a collective experience, not just an individual. So you're onto something there. And I want to thank everybody. We're at our time, so we're going to end up. But I really appreciate you taking time on a Saturday, whatever time zone you're in, and, and your interest in this. And um, we're just on a journey together. It's a lot of fun. We're discovering some incredible things. And love to have you participate with us.